This video will talk about inference and regression. We'll talk about how to perform, perform tests of significance for the intercept and slope, how we interpret confidence intervals, how we can break down the components of linear regression by looking at an analysis of variance table, and how to perform a test of significance that draws conclusions about the slope of a regression. So more about inference and regression. First, let's take a step back. We know that least squares can help us find the equation of a line that describes the relationship between two variables x and y. And these least squares estimates are going to provide us an estimated intercept, what we call beta 0 hat, and a slope, what we call beta 1 hat. If we know what these values are, we can then begin to make predictions using our regression equations. And so making predictions is really one of the most important things about regression, but we need to be careful. We need to understand what the study area is, what the scope of inference is, and we need to be aware of extrapolating. And so remember these things as we go through the slides and talking about inference and regression. One of the things we'll start with is just asking the simple question, are beta 0 hat and beta 1 hat any good? That is to say, might they be significantly different from, say, the value 0? For example, if the slope of the line, if beta 1 is 0, well, that would indicate there is no slope to a line. And so we might want to know if that line is different at all from 0. We might want to know the strength of the relationship between the independent and dependent variables. We might want to know how much variability is explained by the equation of the line. And so inference is really a powerful tool that allows us to answer these questions. We can also make inference on the model parameters. Going back to we might be interested in testing the slope and whether it's zero or whether it's not zero. We could run a hypothesis test on that. It's not very common, but you could also run a hypothesis test on the intercept beta zero. In this case, we're going to use the normal assumption and assume that y sub i is distributed normally with a mean value of beta 0 plus beta 1 times xi, that is the predicted value, with some standard deviation sigma. We can then find the expected value, which we denote with the uppercase letter E, the expected value of beta 0 hat is going to equal beta 0, and the expected value of beta 1 hat is going to equal beta 1, but the variances might be different. The variance for beta 0 hat would be sigma squared and then multiplied by 1 over n plus x bar squared divided by s sub xx. And remember s sub xx were some values we could calculate previously. The variance of beta 1 hat is going to equal sigma squared times 1 over s sub xx. So again, if we wanted to calculate these values manually, we could do those that will set up our hypothesis test. So you can think about the distributions of all of the yi values along some line as distributed like something like this. For every possible value of the explanatory variable x, the average of the responses moves somewhere along this line. And these normal curves will show how y will vary when x is held fixed, and x can be different values. All the curves have the same standard deviation sigma, so the variability of y is the same for all values of x. But it's that value of sigma, it's that value for the standard deviation that really says whether or not the points will fall close to the population regression line, that is, they'll have a small value for the standard deviation, or they might be widely scattered from the regression line. That is, they'd have a large standard deviation. We can estimate what that value for sigma squared is by doing what we call partitioning the variability. This can be helpful in a regression to find out how much the total variability represented by the total sums of squares relates to the error. 
And so as an example, the total sums of squares we could think about as each value y sub i minus the mean value for y squared. We can break that down into component parts or partition the variability into the regression sums of squares and the residual sums of squares. And so the regression sums of squares will indicate how much is explained by the regression line. That is y i hat minus y bar squared. And we add up all those values for everything in the data set. The residual sums of squares you can think about as representing the error. And so we have each observation minus the predicted value, and we square that, and we sum them all up. Remember, too, if we looked at how far a data observation is from the regression line, that's the residual. And so we just basically square them and find the residual sums of squares. I'm just going to leave this slide here to show you if we wanted to calculate these formulas by hand, Here's how we would do it. We could calculate the total sums of squares. We could calculate the regression sums of squares. And we can calculate the residual sums of squares. And so we could do this for all um, of the, using the entire data set, and by kind of doing a manual approach to finding out uh, and beginning to do some inference in a regression.